Hi guys, my name is Dr. Rocker and today I'll show you how to ink your comic book drawing on the iPad with the Procreate app. But even if you only draw traditionally and not possess an iPad or any other tablet, I would like to encourage you to watch this video. Cause you will still be able to take a lot of it because there will be lots of inking tips in there. So let's go! But before we start, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the post notification bell so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. But now my friends, let's draw! For today's video I will draw a commission. It will be basketball players and the whole thing will be printed on a t-shirt. So let's do a really quick sketch. You can do your sketch on the iPad as well of course, but I prefer the feel of a real piece of paper. And I think it's kinda dangerous to only draw digitally, because you will lose a little bit of your skills. Cause when you make a mistake on the iPad, you can take like a whole head, take the whole thing after you drew it, put it 3 millimeters to the left and you're done. When you're drawing on paper you don't have that luxury, you really have to draw everything again but all this repetition makes you a better artist. So that's also a reason why I really prefer to draw on paper. But I can also understand if you really prefer to work digitally, you can be way faster because of those things. So whatever you think is the best way for you to do it. And here's our sketch. I kept it very loose, cause when inking digitally I can undo any mistakes I make anyway. So let's get this thing into the iPad. If you own a big enough scanner, you can scan it in and the easiest way to get it on your iPad is to send it to yourself via email. But even easier than that, and especially since this is just such a loose sketch, I will just take a picture with the iPad itself. Then we open Procreate, create a new canvas, we will have to pick this option and then we don't want the pixels, we want inches. And in this case I need 15.5 times 18 inches. 300 dots per inch would be enough, just to make sure I will go to 400 dots per inch and that's it. That's our canvas. In the right size and now we use this little fellow here, choose import photo and pick the right photo. And now we can size it up as much as we like. Once it's the right size, we choose the layer, click right here and change the opacity so it's barely to be seen. Then we create an extra layer and that's the layer we will actually ink on. We will choose black for our color and now we need the right inking tools, which you can find here under inking. Depending what look you would like to achieve, you can use the mercury, that's a good one. Looks like this. Another one I can recommend is Syrup, very straight line, but what I like the most is this one, Gazinki inks. But you have to be careful, if you're using the standard one it looks like this and when you go over it again it blackens even more. That's not what we want. So we take this one, go to rendering and take the second option, because then as you can see right here, I can show it to you properly with this one. That's the standard. I think you can see it on the video. Here it's extra white. But when we choose evenly covering, then everything is just black. White in this case, but you know what I mean. Another thing I want to recommend when inking on the iPad is one of these guys. Cause with these you can prevent to make a dot when your hand hits the iPad like this. Makes working digitally way easier, trust me. And since everything is set up now, we make sure again that we are on the right layer and then we will start the inking process. In my case, I will start with the flames right here because they are kind of the frame of the whole drawing and all the other lines will run into the flames. So there is no line crossing this one, which means that should be the one I'm doing first. If you don't like a line you just did, you take two fingers and tip it and then they are gone again. But should you decide actually they have been okay, then you just take three fingers and they are back again. Which means two fingers mean undo and three fingers mean redo. You also use two fingers to move the canvas around and make it bigger and smaller as you wish. Which is very important to do because there will always be a way where you feel most comfortable drawing your lines. If you are doing a long line like this right here and then you mess it up at the end and you go redo, the whole line is gone. So better to fix this mistake, just take your eraser, use the one from painting, the first one, bring it in the right size and just do that. 
Another cool tip, if you want to do a straight line with the iPad, you just hold it down and you can see it's a perfectly straight line then. And if you want to make a perfect curve, you do the same thing and then you hold it down and you can see you can even move it around a little bit. And then you have a really nice and perfect curve, like using a French curve. When you use your two fingers to redo this one, there is the version you actually drew and when you do it again, then it's gone. This will come in handy when I want to draw the ball right here. Just do this really quick. You can see it's quite crappy, but now it works. That's nice. Another really good tip is to find a book which has about the same height as the iPad, then lay it down next to the iPad and then you can draw better even here because your arm is not on the edge all the time. Okay, the frame is done, which means we will reduce the size of the pen now and the fun part can begin. Line weight. We will do all the line weight now and for that we will start thick and go thinner towards the light source. The light source is coming from above. We always adjust our canvas, make it big enough and then we can draw properly. The surface of the iPad is really smooth, which lets us work pretty fast. You can do all the outlines on an extra layer or you just start to do some strong blacks as well in this one. If you want to fill a black area like this one, you can just take the color from here and drop it in the area. But of course you can also make your pencil significantly bigger and just go like that. Also works brilliantly. And as you can see, I'm not just using this pen for the outlines but also for the strong blacks and I will do the hatching with the same one as well. When you draw your lines, make sure you break them up every now and then. Looks pretty cool. Especially in a more lit area. Should you be in the position that you would like to erase something more specific, let's say you did this and thought, okay, that's too much. Then you can take the lasso tool, it's this one, the freehand one, and then you just make a lasso like this. Take the eraser and erase everything down and you just erase everything in the lesser. If you do a small detail like the hole in the closing right here, just make sure to be aware of the light source. And when you make the hole, the upper side should be a bit thicker because this is a shadow of the fabric and then it's quite thin here. With details like the face and the eyes, it's especially nice to be able to zoom in like that. But don't get too lost in all these details because when you zoom out, they still need to be seen properly. Especially when you want to print your work later, that could be an issue. Because printers can just do so much. So keep that in mind. Also a great thing when inking digitally, you don't have to kill the flow of the line with always leaving out those spaces. You can just go ahead and do the line and erase out all the small details like veins and stuff like that afterwards. When you draw flames like these, make sure that there are very often points where the lines don't connect. Looks better this way. Not all the time, but quite often. For the stitches from the baseball, I will use the Mercury one. You see, that looks nice. To make the number on the jersey appear as it should be, I will make very thin lines and break them up way more than the other lines. And I will ink all the numbers of the jersey right now because then I have the same settings and don't need to worry about the right size of the pen. To keep the drawing in life you can do movements like this. Even, even though it's digital. Okay and when we are done with the strong blacks and the line weight, we can remove the first layer and then we see what we actually got. Looks pretty cool already, but still needs a lot of hatching lines. And you probably noticed I didn't put any veins in there yet, because those we will do last. Usually when drawing on paper, the veins are the first thing you need to put in, because none of the lines are allowed to cross the lines from the veins. But when inking digitally, that's not an issue, because that's like drawing with a pencil. We can just erase everything after we've done all of the stuff, even the hatching lines. And then we will put in the wings. But you will see that later. Now it's time to start the rendering and we will do this also with the same pen we used all the time. The Gazinki ink. Okay guys, for rendering we create an extra layer. Just like that. And then we start to put all these hatching lines where they belong. 
Try to keep the spaces between the lines very consistent. You can increase the spaces towards the light source a little bit. But all in all, they need to be very consistent. That was not so nice, so just undo it and back on track. And once you have hatched in one direction, you turn the paper and do the cross hatching, which means there's the light source from coming from this direction. So we will start another row of lines like this. I think it's very important to take your time with these because if you rush them, you could also go ahead and do this very fast, but you can see immediately not the best look. So let's do them properly. You can break them up every now and then. And when you're done with the main hatching lines, add some extra very thin lines just like that. Makes it look more alive as well. And you can also do that with the lines from this direction. But don't draw a line between those. That looks unnatural. You really have to follow your lines. So there's a line and then I can go in right here. And what's really cool with the iPad, you can just do this and take a look from afar. And then you can see, okay, that's working. Or you have to adjust something. Another thing that's very important when you do the hatching lines, don't do them too far apart because it shouldn't look too much like a grid like this one. I mean, if you like it, you can do it like that, but it's not really hatching out of the strong blacks, you see that? But if you do it like this, very narrow, but still trying not to just do a dark spot, then it looks way better and the shadings come out of the strong blacks. That's what we want. And another cool thing, since we are using an extra layer for the hatching lines, we can choose the eraser now and just erase everything without touching the strong blacks and the line work. You can see these are very long muscles, so we need long lines, but this is just the kneecap and the kneecap is just standing out a little bit, so we need very small and short lines, just like that. Another very important lesson when it comes to hatching, this is our shoulder muscle. And when, you, when we take a closer look at this muscle, this is the form from the muscle I'm talking about. Okay? And when we are rendering, we need to follow the form from the muscle, which means that's the shape from the muscle. So if this is our shape, we need to follow this shape with our rendering lines. And that's how it's supposed to look. So keep that in mind for all the shapes you are rendering, because it's very important to always follow the lines. Just giving you some examples here, because most of the shapes we will render will be round in some way. A lot of muscles right there. And so we always follow these lines. What I also like to do when rendering is to put some Mark Silvestri in there, where I do lines like this and then other lines like these, like for example, look. And then I'll change the angle. Looks pretty cool as well. Mixes it up a bit. These tendons right here, they also just need a very small dot-like hatching line. You can just make dots. And in between, I like to go with some thin lines like that. Make them a little bit inconsistent, and then you got the nice style right there. When you render something with the iPad and you are zoomed in quite a bit, you have to make sure to zoom out every now and then so you see what you're actually rendering. Because sometimes you might be confusing a core shadow with a cast shadow or something like that. So just make sure to do that quite a lot. And when do so, I have to speak of a downside when drawing digitally, because very often uh, when I would like to zoom out or something like that and I don't get it right the first time, I make a long line with the finger and sometimes you don't even recognize those. And then you have the line and then you go on and then you have to erase the whole line. So make sure to undo the, the lines you did by accident. And by the way, what I meant with 
core shadow and cast shadow is, we only render core shadows. If something like that, that would be a cast shadow, because there is a muscle and it throws a shadow on this muscle, so we don't render here. Never! We only render the core shadow, which is this one, in this direction. If you want to do more broken up lines somewhere in your rendering, you can just do the lines like that, so they are consistent, and then you choose the eraser and break them up with this. Also works really good, of course. Not so easy when inking traditionally. For the rendering of the folds in the closing, we will just do very small and thick lines, just like that. I don't want to over-render all these jerseys anyway, because they are supposed to be yellow, so very bright. Okay guys, the rendering is done, and you might have noticed that there is almost no hatching in the faces, but they are lit with the fire and they are supposed to be very bright, so there will be no further hatching lines. And now all we need to do are the veins. For the veins we will create an extra layer above all else. And instead of erasing the black lines for the veins, we will just use white as a color and draw them over the lines. And for that we will just use the normal brush. The first one right there. But when we would do the veins with this, like here, we would almost not be able to spot them because they are not very much to be seen in, in all of those hatching lines. So we will do something else. We will open the layers go to the background and change the color to gray or something like that. And now we are able to see the veins we will produce really good. So let's draw some veins. Looks pretty funny like that. Now we will use the eraser and do this so they, lo they look good at where they start and end. Now we go back to inks change the color back to black again and then do this. Just draw the shadow of the veins. Break it up every now and then. Light is coming from above, so that's how they are supposed to look. And when we want to see how it actually looks, we change the background color to white again and here we have our veins. And sometimes, like here, the veins should go outside the line of the arm. That's, that's, this is the end of the arm. So I will just draw this in right here. And this will look super cool. Okay, so let's see how this actually looks. Nice! And since the veins are on an extra layer, we can blend them out just like that. And you can see, that's a big freaking difference. And there we have a nice comic book drawing, inked completely on the iPad. But since we are working digitally, I want to show you something else. We can use the mask tool right here, but not the lasso mask, the automatic one. Then we choose this area, select reverse, create an extra layer on top of everything. Now we go into the pencil and take this one, the big one, and with this movement, we can do those cool effects. And after doing some background, we can see if we like it with one click. And here's the finished picture. Here's the pencil sketch again. And here's the inked thing. Digitally inked. Can't wait to see it in full color. Okay my friends, I guess that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said earlier, if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the post notification bell so you won't miss out on any of my future videos and tutorials. And let me know down in the comments which tutorial would you like me to do. And since you have been interested in how to ink on the iPad, you also might enjoy this video. That's where I show you how to color on the iPad. Really cool video, I did a cool Deadpool drawing and there's a lot of information in there, so make sure to check that out. Don't forget to draw every day and see you there my friends. Thank you for watching. I love you.